Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever the time of the day you're watching us here at Dr. Rob Spirits and the Supernatural. I want to welcome you to our YouTube channel. Uh, our YouTube channel was formed by Patrick Walsh, which is uh, my co-host and also producer of the show. Welcome, Patrick. How are you doing, Dr. Rob? It's been a little while. I know. It seems like two years in the making, but we've finally joined the 21st century. And uh, since we don't live in the same state anymore, we needed to find a way to broadcast uh, both of us at the same time. So thanks, Skype, for uh, allowing that technology to be available to us. Yes, and uh, you know it's nice that webcams you can finally get for under ten bucks. That kind of really fit our budget, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, so one of us at least, right? Um, well, I just want to thank all of our our viewers for watching our videos. Uh, they have we you started I think putting up about seven six seven months ago. And uh, they have become, you know, somewhat of a, of a success for us. And uh, so we just want to welcome your comments and suggestions as far as what you might want to see in the future. Now that we have this technology, we are going to be posting several shows throughout the month. And uh, so we're looking for show ideas. If there's a particular celebrity that you want to hear from, uh, please go ahead and leave a comment to us in this video. And uh, Patrick will be checking them. And uh, he is the one who produces the show. So Patrick, tell us a little bit about how you come up with the ideas as far as what questions to ask uh, for the celebrity interviews. A lot of our viewers have been asking us, how do you guys do it? Is it is it fake? Is it real? How does it work? Yeah, and you know, I can understand those are pretty valid questions because I know uh, when you had other rotating co-hosts and before I was real familiar got to work with it while you were doing it, you know, you would kind of make that assumption or think that maybe it's scripted and actually it was odd as I originally remember had a general kind of format of questions when I first started, just things that we'd be interested in about anyone. And then I would at first start, you know, maybe just picking people because, you know, so I would just unload it on you kind of right during the show or you had a lot of times basically zero time or a few seconds to prepare because, you know, in the back of your mind, if you're not familiar with the process, you know, I was a bit of a skeptic myself. So a lot of times I would pick somebody, and that's why I was always secretive about you not knowing who I was working on or anything, and then do a lot of my own homework on people, or I picked people I you know was familiar with or liked, and then basically came up with my line of questions from there, which, like I said, a lot of times you had no notice. Sometimes I dropped it right on you on the air, and I was pretty amazed at some of the results that came back because even after sometimes researching some of these people for several days, there'd be little details that would come up, like I know with Farrah Fawcett and Tom Bosley, that I hadn't come up with any of that. And at first, I was thinking maybe it was some sort of mistranslation with Bosley, you know, Charlie's Angels and Tom Bosley. Nope, sure enough, once I dug a little bit further, we found that, yeah, that uh, they had recorded there are two different series at the same studio set and they had actually been in a movie together even before anybody even remembers so uh, a lot of it I noticed over time I would start kind of seeing who I would suspect was wanting to come through it'd be odd coincidences just throughout you know a course of a week maybe you know I'd be searching something on the web and all of a sudden a deceased celebrity would pop up randomly it didn't fit with my search or just all kinds of odd coincidences where I would start thinking, hmm, maybe this person wants to be on the show. And as we would find when we'd ask some of them, it turned out that, yes, they had been trying to come through. So it's strange how the universe talks to you, and I think it talks to everybody a little differently. It's just a matter of paying attention. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, you know, a lot of people wonder, uh, you know, am I privy to the questions prior to the interviews? And, you know, that is an absolute no. A lot of times you would have your piece of paper and your back to me, you know, or away from me so that I couldn't even read over your shoulder as far as what questions you were going to ask next. And a few times during the interviews, you were you stopped me and you were like, Dr. Rob, how did you know which question was going to come next? You know, you know, they would skip like four or five questions ahead and, and just skip over the ones that they didn't want to answer. You know, so it was kind of funny the way that it all uh, came together. Yeah, well, it really was. Well, remember, especially when we went with a more of a teleprompter format so that I had you sitting further away and I would have my questions numbered. 
But then a lot of times it was almost like purposely different questions were being answered. And I would know that was one of the questions, but then it was messing up my sequencing because, you know, a lot of times, I guess, you know, when you're coming from the beyond, they're not going to allow themselves to be put in our paradigm of order and sequence all the times because evidently it doesn't work that way everywhere else. <laughs> they know you, Patrick, they know how organized you are with things and how much that would really mess you up. So I kind of feel like it, it was kind of, uh, a joke from the other side on you going, oh, you think that you're going to, you know, uh, you know, have order here, but we, we are in charge. You know, a lot of people ask me about the interviews when they call and they say, you know, hey, you did an interview with Gary Coleman or Princess Diana. You know, uh, can you tell me about how they were? You know, or they want to talk to him right then. I mean, I've, a lot of the Kurt Cobain uh, fans have been texting me, uh, is this Kurt? You know, and I'm like, really? Uh, no, uh, this is Dr. Rob. And, uh, you know, cool. Can we talk? And I'm like, uh, well, no, uh, that's not how it works. You know, so uh, when I do a, a channeling is what I call it, you know, I kind of just contact them from the other side and let them speak through me. And a lot of times I won't even remember what was said. I mean, I've listened to some of the interviews later on and have learned some things myself that I didn't even know. So, you know, when I do an interview with someone who's crossed over, I don't really retain the information because it's not me. You know, if it was me making up the answers, then yeah, I would definitely be able to retain it. But since it's coming from through me, like a, as a conduit, it's difficult for me to have like instant recall as, as far as what was said. And I have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of radio shows, thousands of radio shows over the last seven, eight years. And if I remembered every single interview, I would be, you know, out of my mind. So, you know, uh, please be patient if you do call and you want to uh, speak to that celebrity or whatever. Uh, realize that I'm only human and there's just no way I can retain all that information. And those shows were recorded two years ago as well, almost two years to the day, some of them. So please be patient with me as, uh, as we uh, continue forward. Yes, yeah, so that was one thing I noticed. Uh, different interviews seem to sometimes sap your energy at different levels because a couple of them, um, I forget which specific ones you were interviewing, but I remember you'd almost be starting to kind of nod off and about be ready to fall asleep. I think in a couple of them, we actually had to stop recording and you had to go take a nap somewhere and then come back just to re-energize. And then... Absolutely. Even when I would bring up things sometimes an hour or two after we'd recorded it about maybe a detail of some prediction that one of them had made, you would have just really no re-recollection. I think at the time you'd even explain to me that I guess, you know, when you're getting a channeling, it can come in different directions. I think sometimes don't you get almost an audible tone. Other times it's more of visual images. And I think this is usually a big misconception with a lot of mediums is when you're being shown visual images, the words you choose to describe what you're seeing can be different amongst different people. You could have 10 different people look at a picture and use a different choice of words to describe it. And I think that's where you get a lot of misconceptions amongst people and readings and things like that, isn't it? Exactly. It's my worldview. You know, and just as your worldview is different than my worldview, my description of something is going to be totally different than yours, perhaps, and, and, and we see the same thing. You know, I mean, we see a lot of um, cop shows where they'll interview four or five different witnesses of the same, you know, the same crime, for example, and they'll get four or five different stories. And what the investigator has to do is come up with the commonality of, of the stories. You know, someone who has brown hair, may, they maybe see them as a blonde. You know, so there's a lot of different ways of describing things and vocabulary is very important. And, you know, I think that's where, you know, some people are, are thinking inconsistency there, but more of it is, you know, I'm only human, you know, and I have my way of describing things and you have your way of describing things and it, it's just not going to be the same necessarily. I mean, we, we, we work well together and we are generally on the same page with things, but, you know, an outside force, outside force may not be as, you know, prepared. So I think that kind of explains a lot. You know, I do contact those who have crossed over and a lot of times I have to listen to uh, the audible message within like a second. I mean, they're not going to have like a long conversation like we have. You know, a lot of times, unless I channel, I kind of, you know, have to say, OK, this is what they've said or this is how they felt, or this is how they made me feel. 
you know, and that kind of gives me an idea of how they crossed over. If I have a pain in the back of my head, perhaps, or I hear a, a noise and uh, it's a gunshot, you know, then I know they've been shot in the back of the head, you know. So a lot of times I will physically feel, um, you know, the pressure points or the pain instant, instantly, you know, to know where to, where to start. You know, and it kind of it, it, it's a physical feeling for me sometimes where, you know, as you said, you know, a few of those interviews, I had to take a nap. I was physically drained and we don't really edit those interviews. They, they kind of are, you know, done on our, our, our blog talk radio page. Uh, and if you want to listen to those interviews in their entirety, you can go to blogtalkradio.com backslash Dr. Rob Spirits in the Supernatural. And if I had my choice this next time around, I would shorten the name. <laughs> I guess it's a long name to type in. But, uh, or you can just put in Dr. Rob. Um, you can also Google Dr. Rob Cisna, C-I-S-S-N-A, and a lot of the shows will come up under Google. So, you know, there's a lot of different ways. But I would encourage everyone to go on to uh, Blog Talk Radio. It's an awesome format. You know, it's, it allows people to... Uh, not only record radio shows, um, but also they archive the radio shows. A lot of the shows I've done for the various networks I work for, they're not archived, you know. And so there really is no way to listen to live radio later um, because there's no, there's nowhere to go. There's no library. So one of the reasons why we chose Blog Talk Radio uh, was for that reason because we knew that they would be archiving the shows and people could listen to them two, three, ten years later. And especially now with the YouTube, uh, we have found you know the same type of format. That's why you've you know been so gracious as to create those videos. I like the fact that we can actually talk to the viewers and they can see our faces as opposed to pictures now, which I think is going to be a, a great uh, additive to what we have going. Um, like I said originally, um, you know, if you have anyone that you want to hear from, uh, you're a fan of, and they have crossed over, please uh, leave a comment in the comment section. You know, Patrick, I really appreciate all the hard work you've put in onto the show over the last couple of years and, you know, your dedication. And you have a lot of other videos on this uh, channel, uh, instructional videos that people should check out as well. You know, um, I've learned a lot from you over the years. And I spent some time with you in Indiana at the <laughs> Fortress of Solitude, right. as you like to call it. And, uh, you know, so I'm sure that Patrick will be making uh, some other further videos, uh, instructional videos on on. We call you Backwoods Tech. Why? Why do we call you that? Well, basically, remember how when this started a few years back, uh, you originally came out just to kind of do a little radio spot on some off-grid living because you were trying to cover a full spectrum of everything from herbal guests to <coughs> holistic to a lot of different things. And uh, you came out to see pretty much just a self-sufficient little cabin that I've been li living in for years out in Indiana and you know I'd always had some interest in supernatural or unexplainable scientific events so it was actually you know kind of a good chance meeting um, so yeah I've definitely learned a lot I've noticed that I think you've you know like you used to tell me it's even though you were born with a more awareness of some of your different abilities everybody has abilities to a large degree but we're just kind of taught to filter them out or ignore it. So I've really learned to pay attention to those things a lot more. And, you know, I've gotten to see some things. Even we were working with some of these ghost hunting societies and doing some filming and actually got to see tangible pictures. And it seems to mean a lot more when you experience it firsthand. You know, if you show somebody a picture of a ghost with Photoshop anymore, anybody could have probably done that with spending an hour or two. But when you're actually there see it photographed and then it's on a camera it changes your whole point of view there's a few videos there's three videos that um i uh, produced uh, from one of my ghost hunting tours uh there in indiana uh with one of my friends todd comer and uh, so those are also on your site so if you want to check out some orbs and and some other you know supernatural uh phenomenon that's been filmed uh they're only a couple minutes long but uh you know they're well worth checking out as well you know patrick i really thank you today for you know coming on and also for you know as i said you know producing these shows and putting them up you know it takes your time and energies and efforts and i just want to you know say thank you not only for myself but from our viewers and I encourage anyone uh, else to, you know, that wants to 
get into this, you know, leave us a comment in the comment section and we will get back to you for sure. Well, whether you listen to us in the morning, the afternoon, or the evening, thanks again for watching. All right. Well, thanks for coming on and doing a nice little intro for, uh, I guess, what you would call our beginning of our 2013 season, where we'll have some different celebrity channeled uh, videos coming up over the next several weeks and months. And uh, thank you for watching.